Money Lessons from the Great Depression. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I'd ha- like to have a look at this article written by Shane Murphy from Yahoo Finance discussing 12 money lessons from the Great Depression that are relevant in the COVID era. Now, back in April of 2019, I did a video warning about, well, preparing for an Australia, for Australia's coming recession. So that's, that's quite some time ago now. And I did five ways to prepare for the recession. And you can see there, you know, a little bit younger Florian there. Not that young. Uh, I'll link to this video if you want to go through it. But, you know, here are the, the five tips that I shared with people. The first one was to consolidate your debt. You know, just simply reduce your debt, consolidate it, chip it away. Often, I've, I've you know, heard Dave Ramsey and others talk about the snowball technique, where what you do is, you know, you say you've got... Uh, we go say you've got a whole series you know we'll go down here so you've got a whole series of debts you've got a a big debt you know what we'll just do a new page you've got a a big debt little debt little debt and a little debt what you do is you just throw all of your money you pay the minimum at these you throw all your money the little debt first so it's gone then you move on to the next one throw all of your money that it's gone You, you ignore interest it's all about building the psychology the benefits, so you get a positive feedback loop. So paying off that debt, go, yes, I got rid of one, then another one, then another one, then another one. So it's not the most efficient way to do it, but it's the most effective way to do it with the snowball technique, guys, because you get that that positive feedback. And often that's more important than saying, oh, I've saved a few dollars here or there. I'm at the point now where the only two debts we have are our mortgage and our hex debt. And I was, you know, because of the snowball technique, I, we, we kind of did the... We consolidated all our debts and uh, just paid everything off, all the smaller things. And I hadn't heard of the snowball technique until I started doing these videos. So I'm thinking that, okay, I go to Rachel, should we pay off our, our hex? But I just look at what we're being charged there with interest. And right now it's it's still, you know, there's what, 0.3% difference between it and my mortgage. So I'll, I'll still just chuck it at the mortgage. And the next hint I gave was just to reduce monthly expenses everyone just to cut them down get rid of all of the, the you know the subscriptions the gym memberships and your coffees even if you just save five dollars on coffee every here and there you know every day i now am an aficionado of 7-eleven one dollar coffees i can't pay five dollars for a coffee anymore and it's pretty good and you know you might not see down here i actually have an espresso machine you know it's got a, a pump it's got you know, two pumps in it it's a semi-commercial type of thing we bought I, I was quite the coffee snob and now i drink aldi instant coffee i've trained myself to do that to save money <laughs> you know and all of these things out every five dollars you save on a coffee can help pay off this debt and this debt go to the snowball and you may not think it makes a big difference but you'd be surprised you'd be shocked then diversify your income stream I mean, it's easy to say, and uh, I put a warning here. Uh, you can see I marked it up last time. It's just not to fall for scams. You're going to see them. You're going to see lots of scams and things, particularly now when times get tough. I guarantee you, you'll see ads on YouTube of people selling you a get rich quick scheme or how to make money doing drop shipping or these property investor courses. I'll tell you the way to make money is to sell courses on how to make money. That that seems to be the most profitable way to do it, the low effort one. Because we all, if you're not familiar with BitConnect, look it up. It was a huge Ponzi scheme in the last uh, last Bitcoin craze. Then shop left less often. This is, well, for Rachel and I, what we've done is we've shifted to a monthly shopping scheme where we only shop once a month. We buy all our meat in bulk, buy the beast. So we go to the butcher and we order an entire beast and we freeze it. And that means if ever we need food, we just grab something from the freezer and we have it. It's there. And if you shop less less often, there's less chance for you to buy that chocolate or get that, you know, that little treat or buy this or this or get that magazine or the stuff you don't really need. It really is just just filler. And then what did we have here? Uh, this was oh, go camping. <laughs> find ways to save money with your family. You know, go camping. Find you know, be cheap. You know, you don't need all the posh holidays. You don't need all the luxury things. The simple things in life are the most enjoyable. You know, 
you know, family going fishing. And then a bonus hint I gave, because I had five ways, I had a bonus one, was become a handyman. Was to learn all the stuff that your, you know, your father used to do. I think I, I taught myself how to spot weld with a, with an electric little welder. And yeah, well, <laughs> I'm stripping paint. We've got to do lots of stuff on our house. So those were my five ways with a bonus one to prepare for the recession. So with that in mind, you know, I'll have a shot of coffee and we'll look at the, the ways that yeah, uh, Shane is telling us on Yahoo Finance. Let's have a look. A bonus one I have, <laughs> a bonus bonus that is half joking is learn how to fast. Learn how to go without food for a few days even do a i'll I'll generally start the year for a a two-day water fast even up to a week uh because i'm healthy and i don't i don't have any health issues but i do tend to overindulge during the christmas period (laughs) i definitely i've definitely put on or retained a lot of water over the christmas with all the rubbish i've eaten that's the way to do it but you've also got to realize it's it's a way of exposure you'll see in all of these articles you know about such and such had to skip meals so their children could eat you know when they're crafting this this narrative about the the victim particularly anything from the abc it's because we're in such a sheltered soft little modern world that people can't even go without food for one meal and it's it's considered a tragedy that just it's nuts it just shows you how advanced we are how good we have it when fasting is a part of every culture and every major religion all throughout history and if you do it, you can say, you know what, I, I can go a week without food and it's it's manageable. I've done it. Sure, I'll be a bit grumpy and I'll have to have extra salt. But that that takes away that fear. It's part of the, the I'd say, the stoic philosophy, exposing yourself to certain dire situations so you're no longer controlled by that. So you're no longer going to make rash decisions to address a fear when you've encountered that. So that that's my bonus way to prepare for a recession I don't think everyone is quite ready for it, but, you know, just look it up, guys. I mean, even just do intermittent fasting, do one meal a day. That's that's a way, it's it's healthy too. I mean, think about it. Throughout all of history, do you really think hunter-gatherer humans would have eaten three meals a day? <laughs> that's when we became fat city dwellers. So let's have a look at Shane's 12 money lessons. Tens of millions of people have filed for unemployment since the coronavirus reached American shores, leading financial experts to draw comparison between the Great Lockdown and the worst economic disaster in modern history, the Great Depression. And just look up how the Great Depression actually started. Beginning with a stock market crash in October 1929, the Great Depression dragged on for almost a decade, upending the lives of Americans from virtually every walk of life. Close to a quarter of the US population was jobless, and even essential workers like doctors saw their income drop their income dropped up to 40%. Some people scraped by on just pennies a day. Though the Great Depression occurred nearly a century ago, many of the hard lessons learned in the dirty 30s can be applied to the current financial crisis. So let's see some of the tips. One, save for emergencies. Having an emergency fund, it seems like common sense, but it's never even highlighted in any of the articles that we get exposed to or any of the news. You know, there's never any discussion on why didn't you have an emergency fund. Uh, people tend to think that the government support, the emergency support, which is welfare, is, is an emergency fund, but it's not. It's, it's just meant to be a short-term payment to keep you from destitution. Because if you have savings or emergency that, or money, they'll make you whittle that away, guys. And you have to deal with all the bureauc- bureaucracy in those organizations. That should be enough of a disincentive. I don't know how anyone can think it's a lifestyle. It's definitely a punishment. So save for emergencies. Coming on the heels of the Roaring Twenty, a period of widespread prosperity for following World War I, the Great Depression sent a shockwave through the country that most Americans were completely unprepared for. People didn't have enough savings stashed away after ending up broke, unemployed, and saddled with debt. Now, I think it's a bit late to... well. Not really, it's never too late to start saving, never too late to start building an emergency fund, but we can certainly see parallels with that and what we have here in Australia. Our saving rate, sure, it's rocketed recently because no one could go out and do anything, but you know, how many people have emergency funds? I mean, now's the day. If you don't have one and this is the first time you're introduced to it, which is not that, don't feel bad because our education system is terrible, our media is terrible with regards to financial literacy, 
just start chipping away. You know, even if you, you cut one expense that you don't need, one little luxury that you don't need and just save it and start building a little pile of money just in case of an emergency. One of the most important lessons to take away from the depression is that anything can happen. And it's always a good idea to plan ahead. As the unemployment rate keeps rising, you may be worried that you've missed your chance, but it's not too late to set up an emergency fund. The sooner you start putting money into a high yield savings account, the more you'll have available when you need it. Okay, now, of course, they're, they're doing this to plug another article, a high yield savings account. The interest you're going to get on a high yield savings account is a joke. You may beat inflation if you're lucky. If you put it in a high yield, you know, Combank one is 0.5, guys. That, that's less than the inflation, which is at 0.7 right now. And that's if you trust the inflation figures that are coming from the ABS. I suspect it's actually worse than that, particularly for the average plebeian. You know, those normal people that can't get benefits from all, all these other things that have dropped down, but our food and petrol is getting more expensive. But anyway, it is a good point. You know, and I would suggest you need, well, you need a, just a little, a small stash of cash at home, even just a couple of hundred bucks so you can fill up the tank and get some food if you need it. So we don't have the situation where, you know, our digital systems fall apart and you're having to rob a petrol station like Australians did in the bushfires and then have an emergency fund that you just sit there. And one thing to be aware of, everyone, is that there's an all monies clause with the bank. So I would suggest that you look at separating your emergency fund from your other banking. If, if you've got all these debts with another bank and you get in trouble, you want to make sure that the bank just can't consolidate all your money into one thing. Whoop. So keep your business as well separate from your personal. Maybe even shift your emergency fund somewhere else. Just keep, keep that in mind, everyone. Not many people are aware of that all monies clause. Do it yourself. During the Great Depression, DIY became a... Uh, gilding principle if you wanted something you couldn't afford to buy the next best option was to make it yourself people made everything from clothes to cleaning supplies at home they even whipped up toys like corn husk dolls to keep the kids busy well yes i mean rachel today oh for christmas she made three aprons for family members she does a very good job she uses that to justify buying all the material which i think she tells me she has two hobbies. And the other blokes here that have wives that are into sewing can probably relate to this. One is the sewing and making things. And the other is the collecting material to allow her to sew and make things. Apparently, they're two hobbies. That's what they say. Oh. If you're looking to save a bit of money during the pandemic or just avoid going to the stores, you can find a ton of free tutorials online that will show you how to make all sorts of useful products. Don't try to make your own disinfectant, though. Now, this is the thing. You can, you know... We're in a different world now. Access to YouTube is fantastic. That's how I learned how to weld. I, it's a I did a terrible job at it, but it's how I learned. Three, take steps to avoid debt. Yes, this is really important. I mean, this is just the general life, a general life rule. But, but more so now when, well, people's job security may not be there. You've got to remember, everyone, that the economy is just propped up now by government intervention. Job keepers propping up zombie businesses. The job seeker bonus is, well, providing more people in hardship with money than they normally would have. When that disappears, there's going to be some impact on the market. One of the main reasons, or one of the reasons poverty was so widespread during the Great Depression was that during the Roaring Twenties, many Americans took out in installment loans and lines of credit with retailers. But when the stock market crashed and the layoffs began, these borrowers found themselves faced with a mountain of debt and no way to pay it off. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? These days, debt is still a major problem. People have been eager to defer their credit card payments during the pandemic. But unless their interest rates are on hold too, they're only digging themselves in deeper. You can defer credit card payments? I remember you could, you could defer your mortgages. Were people deferring credit cards? I mean, credit cards are horrible. They are a horrible, horrific invention. I finally pulled my finger out and got rid of a personal credit card. We've got one for business and one for personal. And I finally got rid of it. I, I had it just out of convenience because I use it to purchase online things. But I just got to, you know, cut it up, got a visa debit. You know, its limit was 500 bucks. I would have put it lower if I could have. So to avoid repeating the mistakes of the Great Depression, try your best to clear your debt as soon as possible. You may want the help of a debt consolidation loan to save on interest, lower your monthly payments, and get out of debt faster yes but okay but also the debt snowball technique guys 
That's, that's what you also want to look at, the dead snowball technique. Think about that. You may not be able to get a loan as well. So get all your debts, put them from largest amount to smallest amount, ignore the interest and just pay them off. Throw everything you can, pay the minimum all the other ones and throw everything you can at the smallest one. That's the strategy. Because then you get that psychological feedback. Once you get rid of that first one, oh, it'll feel good. And then you go to the next one and you just go hard. You cut everything. We, we were at a point where we spent nothing. I told Rachel, okay, we cannot spend any money until like this next invoice comes in. So nothing, not a cent. That when we were doing real scant and you've got to do it. You've got to do it. And going through that in some ways is very good because you can really learn how to save money really well. So eat at home. Oh, here, this is number one. This is the most important one. I bet a lot of people uh, have realized how much money they're wasting eating out. For the majority of Americans in the 30s, dining was uh, out was, pardon the pun, off the table. Practically every meal was cooked from scratch at home, and the recipes of the day were creative, to say the least. Classic depression era, era dishes included vinegar pie, dandelion salad, and something called Hoover stew, which incorporated macaroni, hot dogs, and anything else lying around that seemed somewhat edible. <laughs> well, you've got to do it. Hoover stew, hoovering it all up. While you may not be quite that, uh, while you may not be quite that depressed. Making your meals at home and actually using up the food you've got in your pantry remains a sensible way to save money, especially since you've earned, you can earn cash back on your groceries by snapping a photo of your recipe. I doubt of your receipt. Yeah, I, I doubt that. I mean, we, we, as I said, in my thing, we buy our food monthly, so we don't go out as much. We buy our beef in bulk. So we, I mean, the thing is you need capital to do that. We spend about or two grand because we want a hormone-free, pasture-finished cow. And we will eat that. We'll have it, we, you know, we've got a big freezer, we'll freeze it there, uh, deep freeze it, and then transfer it to another one, and then just eat that. Because, well, it, we're saving money just, sure, we've got the extra electricity costs of freezing it, but we're saving money by buying in bulk. We get to eat a lot of healthy, healthy, good steak. And you get really good quality, really good quality. So don't be afraid to relocate. Now this I can't see happening in Australia. I think people with our welfare system now, they're not going to relocate. You know, that's, that's the problem. But you may have to. In the economic, I mean, just think of, of mice and men. That's what I think about. In the economic fallout of the Great, De uh, if the economic fallout of the Great Depression wasn't bad enough, farming in the Southern Plains States during the 30s was ground to a halt by a series of droughts and dust storms. As a result, the area known as the Dust Bowl saw the largest migration in U.S. history, with more than 2 million residents pulling up stakes and moving to wherever they could find work. With unemployment today nearing nearly 50%, 15%, many Americans have begun to broaden their job search and consider relocating. Thankfully, finding employment in new places no longer involves hopping on a freight train and riding the rails from town to town. And he's talking about online job anyway. But so relocating, what do you think? Do you think Australians would relocate for a job? It doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be possible. Well, maybe, I guess. We'll have to see if people do it. Protect your family with like I mean, well actually people are, aren't they? They're relocated. We're seeing the green chain. People now are more and more able to work online and work remotely. But the risk of that is now that means if you can do that you're competing with people all over the world too. Protect your family with life insurance. Um, we had an article a few before talking about hoovering up every piece of food to try and get stuff to eat. Now you're thinking people can afford life insurance? Okay, sure. Being a parent can be stressful at the best of times, but the Great Depression was a new low. Not only was it hard to provide adequate food and shelter, but if something happened to you, your children could be left out in the cold without a dollar to their name. One of the saving graces for family during the depression was life insurance, which provided liquidity during a time when even the banks couldn't. Cash value policies help many stay afloat and avoid financial ruin. To this day, buying a life insurance policy is, is critical to ensure that your family will be protected after you're gone. Okay, well, there you go. I mean, that's just a plug for life insurance. I mean, how many of you self-insure? We, we, I looked at a video where we discussed insurance. Seven, live within your means. Yes, well, 
how many people are living within their means. If you're buying anything on a credit card or if you're using Afterpay, I'd say you're not living within your means. It's that simple. You know, if you've got the cash, you've got the cash. If you have to pay it off over time, are you stretching beyond your means? What if something happens and you can't make those repayments? That, that's the, the issue. Just save up for a month and then don't bother with it. Don't bother with using these systems. Many Americans saw the economic growth of the Roaring Twenties as an excuse to live outside of their means. People purchase big ticket items they couldn't really afford on installment, meaning they'd make a small down payment up front and then make monthly payments with interest moving forward. It was like getting a mortgage for everything. Needless to say, that did not end up being a smart move. In order to keep your head above water during the pandemic, you'll need to avoid the same mistakes. Keep a budget of your monthly expenses and try your best to only make necessary purchases with money you have for the time being. You know, and another plug. <laughs> I mean, it feels like there are some good tips in here, but of course they have to tie it all to cross link and promote. You know, refinance your mortgage. I mean, how many people have done this, guys? How many of you have taken advantage of the 1.99% interest rate? And if you, I'm sure if you look at the comparison rate with the fees, you're probably paying a bit more, but still, the, co the, uh, the cost of money is just insane. You know, remember when 3% cash rate was considered emergency? So refinance your mortgage. When the Great Depression hit, homeowners suddenly found themselves unable to make their mortgage payments. To prevent foreclosure, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Homeowners Refinancing Act of 33, allowing Americans to alter the terms of their loan so they could keep their home. Refinancing is still a valuable tool to trim down on the cost of your mortgage. It could help you save thousands of dollars a year on your monthly repayments. But see, here's the thing. We've got worse than that. We have mortgage holidays. Did mortgage holidays even occur in the Great Depression, everyone? I, I've never heard of it. it. It seems like an unnatural thing. But there you go. We, see, we're better at our market interventions now than they were back then. Number nine, odd jobs are better than no jobs. Well, see, we've got also Uber and gig economy and all of these things. But you see now that the unions and, and people are trying to destroy that opportunity and take that away from people. Even fruit picking, they want to destroy the opportunity that they have there from people by into, to, you know, by setting, well, expectations for that sector similar to other ones. It's, it's crazy. They're going to destroy uh, work. They're going to destroy opportunities. You've got to understand that when we get in real tough times, they're going to be people that would rather work for below the minimum wage and have a job and have some, have some self-respect. That will not be allowed because of the artificial interventions we've put in the market. So you, if you're an advocate for that, you then have a duty of care to support those people. You, know, you can't have it both ways. You've got to understand. You can't be there going, oh, you know, criticizing doll bludgers when some people can't even get into the market. They may not have the skills because you've priced them out of it. And you've probably destroyed the opportunity by having these interventions for some people to get their first foot up, to get their first door, to get that skill and experience and just working as well and building those habits. Some people don't even have them. I know it's quite depressing, really. As the Great Depression wore on, people took work anywhere they could, including individual tasks like chopping wood or shoveling snow paid upon completion. These days, one-off jobs are typically known as side gigs, and they're no longer limited to manual labor. You know, online marketplaces, okay, yeah, so wards, anyway, another plug for things, but we'll have to see that that's the thing it sounds good and there are opportunities there but they're diminishing they're, they're moves political moves to remove the opportunity for people to do gig work look at what happened in california everyone all their interventions into the market there spare change adds up one of the best known songs of the depression era was brother can you spare a dime and for a good reason back then a dime or two could mean the difference between eating or going hungry on any given day and while a dime doesn't carry the same cloud as it did in the dirty 30s, it can still make a difference when you save up enough of them. Most of us have coins and bills collecting dust in drawers and coat pockets. And if you're stuck at home during the pandemic, you might as well see what you can have. Okay, I mean, micro investing apps. I mean, this is just, I'd say being penny wise. You know, save your pennies. I give every dollar you get a mission and appreciate it. And, and don't look down on, on, you know, getting a few dollars here or there. It all adds up, guys. You know, if you want to retire, start saving now. For most people during the Great Depression, there was no such thing as retirement. 
More than 63% of, of men aged 65 to 75 were still in the labor force in the 1930s. When the market crashed, people found themselves without savings to fall back on. The only way to avoid the, uh, to afford the barest essentials like food and shelter was to work until you were physically unable to do so. If you'd like to avoid working well into your 70s, it's a good idea to start saving for your retirement as soon as possible. Social security doesn't go that far even today. Well, yeah, I mean, how many of you expect to get the pension when you retire, guys? And 12, help your community. Times were tough for everyone during the Great during the depression and the fact that most people were going through similar hardships helped create a stronger sense of community americans rallied together and supported their neighbors whether it was with a bit of food some spare clothes or a dry place to sleep those who had more gave to those who had had less whenever possible i mean that's a good point get to know your neighbors so here we have the 12 lessons with a lot of them feeling crammed in here just to you know plug referral links to certain things but still still some good points i mean having an emergency fund guys learning how to do it yourself you know and avoiding debt i'd, I'd say they're the three big ones what do you reckon everyone as always you know let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below what are your great money lessons or tips you would give people or even better what would you tell yourself when you're a bit younger and more and stupider anyway guys thanks for watching like share subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.